For this demonstration, we'll be using dressed field stone primarily, with the variations shown as they apply to the other products. The general techniques shown here will apply to any installation with a 12mm mortar joint. If your project has outside corners, always begin the install with those. Notice that each corner piece has a long leg and a short leg. These should alternate as you go up the corner. Apply mortar using any of the methods described in the mortar techniques section. Press each piece into the mortar bed firmly enough to squeeze some mortar out around the edges of the piece. This will ensure a good bond. As you place each piece, be sure the mortar joint remains consistent. When using a ledge style product, like this country ledge stone, you will also need to check your work regularly to make sure each stone is level and plumb. Stone should first be applied around openings before laying courses on the rest of the wall. Take care to pre-select pieces that fit properly around the opening. Lay in a course of stones at the top of the opening that extends out at least 100mm on either side. Then surround the opening with stone, working outward toward the rest of the wall. Once the corners and trims are in place, you can continue by laying the flat pieces. The largest part of most cultured stone projects is installing the flat stones on the wall. In general, you'll want to lay the bottom stones first, then fill in toward the top. Ledge style stones should be installed from the bottom up, checking occasionally to make sure each stone is level and plumb. Keep your mortar joints as consistent as possible, approximately 12mm wide, depending on the type of stone you are installing. The mortar itself need not be smoothed between the stones just yet. We'll get to that shortly. If you are using a ledge stone product, choose pieces to ensure that vertical joints do not line up. As you work, use small pieces to fill in voids. If you are using a ledge stone product, choose pieces to ensure that vertical joints do not line up. You may have to cut or trim pieces to achieve a proper fit. Consider feathering the cut edges with a masonry axe, hatchet or nippers. When using a wet saw, be sure to clean the stone with clean water after cutting. For best finished appearance, coat or cut broken edges with mortar. If possible, position cut edges up when they are above eye level and down when they are below eye level. Remember to work at your own pace and be sure to stand back from time to time to evaluate your installation. Cobble Field is a unique texture that's also generally installed with a 12mm mortar joint. When using cobble field stones, note that a percentage of the pieces are slightly thicker than others. These accent stones should be placed randomly throughout the wall to add texture and shadow to the finished installation. While cobble field stones are typically laid horizontally, a medium piece might occasionally be placed on end if needed. As you work, stop several stones short of any inside corners. Select and install the pieces that butt up against the walls on each side. They should be placed so that they knit together in an alternating pattern as shown. Continue this process as you work the stone up the corner. Then fill in the remaining wall area as before. After you complete a section or job, fill the joints using your grout bag. Start by troweling some mortar into the open end of the bag, like this folding the end to form a seal. Then squeezing the bag, lay in a bead of mortar appropriate to the size of the gap. The mortar used for this step will need a little more water than the mortar used for the setting bed. After the mortar in the joint has become firm to the touch, thumbprint hard, as shown. The joints are ready to be finished. Use a pointed wooden stick metal grouting tool or a kitchen butter knife, compress and rake out the excess mortar for a clean, uniform look. 
This joint here is just right, while the one you see here has been raked too deeply. Consistency is the key here, so keep checking back on your previous work as a reference, both for finishing the joints and helping keep the joint width consistent. At the end of the workday, or when the mortar is sufficiently set up, the finished job should be broomed or brushed to remove loose mortar and to clean the face of the stone. Never use a wet brush to treat the mortar joints. This will cause staining that will be difficult, if not impossible, to remove. Pressure washing equipment or hydrochloric acid should never be used on cultured stone products.